So now we're moving on to building out our repositories and our services. And luckily for us, these repositories and services are going to be relatively simple. And the first one that we are going to start off with is our repositories. And let's just go ahead and start off with our user repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here. I'm going to create an interface and this is going to be user repository. And what we're going to do in here is just have a way to get the user by the email and the username. So what I will do is I'll just go into here. I'm going to go user entity find by, uh, let me see email. And this will take in a string of email, of course. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my user entity. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do this with the username. So I'm going to go user entity, uh, find by username. So find by username. And we're going to take in a string and we're going to pass in the username. Okay. So I'm going to double check to make sure that it is matching the username. So that looks good. Uh, what we will do next is go into the repository folder once again, and then we're going to create a role repository. So we'll go down here. We'll go role repository, 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 just like that. And the actual methods that we are going to create are going to be the same exact thing. So we are going to find by name and we're going to take in a string. So let's go ahead and re uh, rerun it to make sure that it is going to create these. Whenever you create a repository method, you need to run it to make sure because if it doesn't actually create the method, you will get an error down here in the console saying that it wasn't actually able to create the method. And if it gives you that error, it means it didn't create it and you need to go back and fix what it actually is. I'm a silly goose. I, I forgot to go in here and make sure that it's actually inheriting from the JPA repository. Silly me. Okay, so let's do that real quick. We'll go user entity and we will call this a long so let's see here. And this is going to extend. Then we'll go ahead, bring this in. And I'm just going to copy this real quick, paste it into my role repository and switch out the user entity with a role and make sure it's the role that you are actually using in your models. So let's go ahead, let's run it again and looking good. So we are good to go on our repository methods. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make a service. We could create a role repository, but I'm just gonna wrap everything in a actual user service because I don't think that there, there's a big necessity to have a role repository right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add a interface and I'm going to add a user service just right here. So we'll say user service and this is going to essentially just save a user. So we'll go into here, we'll say save user. <clears throat> and the save user is going to take in a registration D uh, DTO. So we need to make a DTO for this. So register, registration DTO. So uh, create class and we actually need to create this. So let's go up to our DTO folder and I'm gonna call this registration DTO. And I think that that is spelled correctly. It's kind of a long word. So the actual registration DTO is going to include a long, so we'll say long ID. And we will have a private string username. And you could just copy this from uh, the actual user uh, from the user DT or the uh, actual user model, but we're already here. So let's just go ahead and type it out. So let's, we'll go private and we'll say string. And this is going to be password. And because registration is probably one of those areas where people try to um, fudge data as much as they can, whenever somebody actually logs into any of your apps, the register and the, the actual register is going to be probably the biggest area where people will fill out bogus information. So if you want any, if there's anywhere where you want to put really rigid validation, it's going to be in the registration DTO because people 
fill out registration forms in all types of crazy ways. So at the very least, you want to make sure that people are not submit submitting bogus data. So we'll just put a couple not empty validations right here so that uh, we can be make sure that people are not submitting blank data to our actual registration form. Okay, so let's go back to our user service. We'll go ahead and bring that in right there. And let's go ahead and create our user service impl. So what I'll do is go into here and as always, we're going to create a class. So we'll go user service impl. Then in here is where we are going to inherit from the actual user service. So what I'm gonna do is just have an implement. So this is going to, because it's an interface, we're going to use an implement. So we'll go in here, user service, get our red light bulb. So bring down all of this right here. We'll bring down our save user. And we're gonna have to bring in a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna bring in both the user and the role repository. So we'll say user repository, looking good. And we'll also bring in our role repository that we just made. Then, we'll have a constructor down here. Technically, we don't need a constructor, but it is good practice to add one anyway. So we'll go make sure that we're bringing in both of these and also make sure to give it a good old auto wired so that it looks official. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in a registration DTO and it's going to be a just like a regular save. And what we will do first, we will make a user entity. So this will be a user entity and whatever comes in through the registration DTO is what we are going to fill up this object with so that we can save it to the database. We can't save a registration DTO to the database because it's a totally different entity. If we're going to save something, it has to be in the actual user entity form. So. We'll go registration DTO and we're getting our username. So we'll say get, and I got to go back here and add all of my long box stuff. So what I'm going to do is go in here. I'm going to say data and that should do it. I think if we, if it doesn't, then we'll just go back and add whatever we need. So we'll have a get user. Then what we'll have is, uh, let me see email. So we'll say set set email. We don't want to get, so we'll say registration, get email. And also we're going to have our password. So we'll say user dot set password. So we're going to say set password and we'll say registration DTO dot get password, just like that. And then we also need to populate our actual user with our role. So what we'll do here is we'll say uh, role repository, and then we're going to find by name and we will find by name um, user. I think that that's what we saved into our role. So we'll go here. Let me make sure that that's exactly what we have. Okay, so we want user. So when we actually save a user, we want to actually save the user as a user. We don't want to make everybody an admin. You just want to go into your admin and set them as a actual, you want to set it manually in the database. So we're gonna say uh, role repository, find by name, we'll say user roles. So it's user dot get roles or uh, set roles. We're gonna set these roles and then we're gonna say, then we're gonna have to turn it into an actual list because right now it's not, it's not gonna be a list. So we're gonna say as list and all this is going to do is turn it into a list so that we can save it. And then we'll say user repository dot save is equal to user. And that looks good. So let's go ahead here and run it. Everything seems to be looking good. And next video, we can start working on the controllers, but let's just go ahead and make sure everything is working and running and we don't have any errors before we actually move on. Okay. So we're looking good. We've got a, a lot of our infrastructure built. Now we can actually go on to building the next form in our next video. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.